Greetings, brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. May God's Holy Spirit empower this. May it be fruitful for God. So my gnarly repentance moment came in a prison cell. Before that, I already had God in me. I already knew his word. I already had my mom speak it into me. But at that point, I was just following the same thing you'd see on TV, where the Italian mob would do this and go kill somebody and then go into church and do this again. And it was, you know, it was me being God and living as if I was God. You can call me a prodigal, whatever you want to call me, but I had God in me. I knew who he was. Holy Spirit in me. I had I, I saw an angel when I was a kid on the foot of my bed. I know I'm anointed. And I lived recklessly as if I wanted to die, daring God to let me die from an abusive childhood where I ran hardcore in the drug war, drug trafficker, hardcore in prison. The repentance moment I had was where I realized, and this is because the Holy Spirit allowed it. There had many, been many times where I prayed and in tears and said, God, help me, re rescue me. And every single time, my own thinking, my own flesh would figure out what everybody else has done wrong against me, including my father, including the government, including the hypocrisy that God gave me the eyes to see. Priests that molest children and not doing anything about it. The drug war, which is just ridiculous that I wrote about in 2009, that Harvard people agreed with it. Eight, ten years later. That's why I'm so bold because I know what God's given me. I know He's given me the ability to see clearly. And that also hindered me. This ability to see hindered me because it was always me, me, me. And it hindered me to get that full repentance. And in that cell, I got that full repentance. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. At the end of myself, He allowed me to see that this tiny little me on his knees in a cell with seven years left of a sentence was the one in the way of God and that it was not the priest. It was not the drug war. It was not my father. It was none of them that my sins were against. It was my God who created me for an ultimate purpose. And I saw that and I was like, oh my God, I've, I've sinned against you, Father. And I, I don't, my whole body was convulsing. I was in tears. And, and this was a process that was like two or three days. And I started hearing this song. He's got the whole world in his hands. And it was like he was guiding me to sleep. And it was like he was letting me know that everything that had come against me is going to be worked out for his glory. And it's been a long process since then, brothers and sisters of Christ, saints. It's been almost 20 years now of writing nonstop. It's been him showing up again and again in mighty ways. Now, because I'm rescued from so much, because I went so far that way, and because God's given me eyes to see, I can see bad teaching. I can't. I'm in the word nonstop. I'm studying it from the greats. Now, this is no credit to me. This is just because my hunger and desire to know who God is is so great that that's all that's left for me. I've tasted the entire world. I've tasted the adrenaline from drug trafficking with, with mobsters of every ilk. I've tasted it in prison where I was like, okay, now I'm going to handle it over here. It is what it is. That's why I've written 10 books about it. I've tasted it all. I've tasted the, the addiction. I've tasted the gambling. I've tasted the sex. I've tasted it all. I've tasted the power from it. It's lacking. It ends up what Solomon said, that it's like chasing the wind and to Fear the Lord and to stay away from evil is the key. And so now, rescued from all that, now in his word, now published 70 books into this, now seeing, okay, I have to have more faith. I have to have more faith. I want to say that I don't like seeing people call out and show a bunch of pictures of people's faces and calling them all false prophets because that works for the devil. What did Paul do? Paul scolded them but he lifted them up he lifted up what they're doing well and then scolded them that what they're doing practicing whether it's homosexuality practicing adulterous affairs practicing sorcery practicing drug use you keep listing it on is not going to inherit the kingdom of heaven and it's discounting what christ did at the cross peter later says you're gonna suffer for something whether you're a murderer whether you're in all that other stuff i just mentioned you're suffering in that you're not finding any freedom you're trying to find something that only Christ can fill. So you're going to suffer over there. 
And then he says, you might as well suffer over here for Christ, because this suffering brings about eternal glory. It brings about glimpses of who Christ is. So when you lump up all these faces, you're doing a disservice to the kingdom because early on in this turnaround for me, where the Holy Spirit allowed me to have that repentance moment, people like Joel Olstein encouraged me with these messages that you could break generational curses. Now I get it. Now that I'm rescued and I'm so into the word, I can see little phrases like that, like that other guy I posted that was for a book signing that I, that I loved up to this point until he said that, he, that, he, that these people have to find churches that affirm their beliefs. I, I pick up on key words like that. No, 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 no. We don't affirm beliefs that come from Satan. We call those out. So you would want to lift up this man and show what he's doing right and then say, no, but these words here go against what Christ did on the cross. And these are the people who show us why it goes against it, and we quote those verses. So if I am lumping everybody else and calling them false prophets, I'm working for Satan. Because what I should be doing is lifting up what they're doing right, and then finding what they're saying that's wrong, and then in correction. Because now you're showing the people that are, that are involved in his ministry, that are newly into his ministry, some, some biblical knowledge, some discernment. We're allowed to do that. We're allowed to do that by faith in what we understand about the word and what we've been rescued from. But to lump them all up together, you're actually an accuser of the brethren. You're working for the enemy. Let's just say that Joel Osteen ends up realizing what he's doing wrong, if he's doing anything wrong. I'm not even saying he is, because I'd have to quote what he said. God can work through that, obviously, and use all that money he's making to the benefit of the kingdom if it comes down to the point where it's needed that way. There is a bunch of stuff out there that's just bad doctrine, and I can speak on that. We are supposed to change into the image of Christ through repentance. We're supposed to understand we need repentance. We need it. If you're just floating around thinking you can be God and go to church, you're wrong, and the teachers that are preaching that are wrong. So we can teach the wages of sin or death, and the wages of sin blindfold you to the fact that you need a savior and that you are supposed to be transformed into the likeness of Christ through a continual sanctification, being set apart process from your flesh and into the spirit. Now back to this labeling of all these guys false, false prophets. There might be a few in there. I can show you some stuff the Pope has said, that he's using the Quranic text of one person killing one person kills all of humanity and one person saving one person saves all of humanity. That's blasphemy. Christ is the only one that came and paid the ultimate price to save humanity. Christ is, the whole scripture speaks about Christ from the Old Testament. We didn't even have the New Testament when Christ was here. And he says, the whole scripture speaks of me. So that's the Old Testament. So we must need to understand what the Old Testament says to understand what he fulfills to be God's son. And when we understand that, we realize that statement is blasphemy. We can look down further in that document that's heading toward one world religion and see that it says that God willed all these different religions and sexualities. Blasphemy. Satan's been kicked out of heaven. Jesus came to defeat the works of the devil in 1 John. The works of the devil are to separate you from a need of Jesus Christ. So I can call that out as bad teaching. May he be a bad prophet toward the end? Maybe. But if we lump everybody up together, and say they're all false prophets, that's, that's not true either. God might be working on them to transform them and change them from where they're deceived. We're all deceived. We all need Christ. The only way we're not deceived is to realize that my whole heart, my whole brain has to be fully attuned to him. Nothing can come a, a, a before that. Not a wife, not a church, nothing. I love the Lord. I love what he's doing in my life. I love that it's not all about me. What he's done in my life is amazing. The power that he's given me over sin and death is amazing because it doesn't have the same power it used to have over me. The things that my dad used to do, the things that he used to say, the things that other people are doing and that they say have no power over me. If they do, it's only for a little bit now because I realize, woo, that's Satan trying to hold me. He's trying to keep me captive. 
nope, not going to do that because then I discount what Christ did on the cross. Christ died for all who believe. So I cannot get in the way of that or I'm trying to be God. No, I'm supposed to be Christ-like. And another thing he's revealing to me, and I've gone through a lot by being so bold, is he's revealing to me that I taught you to love the brothers. The brothers are in Christ. Love them, love them, love them. And encourage them. Since I know what Christ has rescued me from, look at the people who are going this way from over there, who are amazing recovery stories, testimony stories. I have a friend who has a truck that says, um, Grace, Mercy, Mercy Moving. I'm going to do a video on him. And I know where he was, and now I see where he is. And so when people are starting to turn and go this way and start to be bold, that's scary stuff. They're speaking for the kingdom. Their territory is being taken in their own temple and in other people who are going to hear it that realize depression that leads to suicide can be beat when you proclaim what you're supposed to proclaim. We have God's breath. We're supposed to. The Bible says we are supposed to praise him. When we praise him, we're in alignment with what we're created to do. When we forget to do that, you can be the best athlete in the world, hit all these home runs, be the best surfer in the world. You can be the most exciting person in the whole world. And if you forget to praise God, eventually you're going to go depressed. You're not doing what you're created to do. And you might have suicidal thoughts. You might lean toward drugs. You might lean toward a bunch of other stuff because you didn't do what you're created to do. Praise the Lord. Praise God. The Holy Spirit is amazing. He created everything. We're created to do that. Number two, we're created to give a testimony to who God is. Faith comes by hearing, and by the word of God is how we hear about what God's done. Psalm 77, 11, Psalms 107, 2. And then we have the disciples and how their lives was transformed. And then we have the Mary Magdalene's who were rescued of seven demons and were listening and loved so deeply because they were forgiven so much that they heard Christ. She's an apostle to the apostles. So we get these beautiful little tidbits. And then we see that, okay, thank you, Lord. I'm going to lift up those around me who I see are a beautiful testimony because I know the encouragement, the love. Come on, keep going, keep going, keep talking about it. And then I also know that they're going to go through some woo, woo, because the enemy does not want that testimony out. Ephesians 2.2 2 says clearly, Paul saying clearly that this is Satan's territory until Christ comes back. He is the prince of the airwaves. So since he is in the airwaves, that means he must have media. He must have everything that we're hearing. When we go back to the prophets, which is so important to go back to the Old Testament, Isaiah on his commission, he's taken up to the Holy of Holies, and he's like this. I can't even speak. I'm around such purity, such truth. Everything I've been saying is rubbish. What I should have been saying, and this is my interpretation, is God is great. God is good. God is holy. God is mighty. Look at him. And holy, 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 that's a trinity. Brothers, sisters, saints, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. That's what that is. So what does that mean to us now? That means Jesus is healer. He's healer of every broken heart. Everything that's come against you that's broken your heart. He's the healer of that. He paid the ultimate price by going to the cross, living perfectly, making every step perfect to fulfill every single thing that the Old Testament said. We have power in that. He's the deliverer of every wrong thought. Now, when I, when I had my repentance moment, I re realized that I had everything wrong, that my reaction to everything was wrong. It was against God. It was tough because this stuff came against me at 11 years old. So for a long time, I was like, that's not fair. He shouldn't have done that. He ruined my sports career, blah, blah, blah. I stopped going to school and I lived to de destroy myself and to kill myself. And he just didn't let me die. So he's deliverer of every wrong mindset. So everything that was attached to that, that this isn't fair, this jumping to conclusions and all these other things that are essentially me playing God in front of God and deciding what should be God, what, what God should do. God bless my plans. I'm doing it right and they're not paying attention. It's not how it works. I gotta give it all to God. So you become delivered from that. 
and you start realizing, wait a second, if I get in the way at all, I'm in the way of what Christ did. So I'm supposed to be praying for these people. I'm supposed to be bold and being driven into the Word to find the answers to all this that's still troubling me because we're living in a troubled world. God bless you guys. I call out a lot of stuff because I see I'm a researcher and I'm a writer and I call it out when I see the words that are wrong. But at the same time, God's showing me, okay, it's okay to do that. Be bold. I use Peter like that. I use bold people. I'm, 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 I'm very pleased with you, Glenn. Very pleased with you, Glenn. And he's shown me signs of that. At the same time, I got to lower myself, lower myself. Christ washed the disciples' feet. Christ washed Judas's feet. So I got to be willing to wash these people's feet that are frustrating me with bad teaching. So yeah, of course I'm willing to wash their feet. And I've also got to be lifting up the little ones that are just starting to turn. Part of the reason I get frustrated is because woe to those who lead these little ones astray. That's not just talking about kids. That's talking about little ones turning toward Christ. So if you're turning them back toward drugs and alcohol, legal or otherwise, woe, turn them toward Christ as the healer. He is the healer, the deliverer, and the redeemer of every wrong thought into his economy of glory. If all we're doing is talking about vain pursuits and psychiatry and this, this, and that, and we're leading them to that, and we're trying to keep everything private, no, be bolder than that. Gather around the people that are bold like that. Come on, let's do this. Let's do this for Christ. He is, the lead. he is our leader. He is the one who makes a way. We step into that. He said, follow me. Can you imagine Peter? Follow me. Can you imagine Peter saying, yeah, I'll follow you, but I'm going to smoke some weed first. I'm going to take all these other drugs for all, from all these psychiatrists. Can you imagine him still going to the cross? No. No. Suffering brings about glory. God bless you.